Hey everybody, it's Mr. B. Uh, this is a tutorial video in using SketchUp for Schools to, to create a project I call Keychain. So Keychain is kind of like it sounds. You're going to create a 3D model from scratch um, that's like a keychain tag, you know, like a little tag you might put on your keys. Uh, and it's going to be really cool. You're going to create it from your own ideas. This is going to be a prescribed shape. But you're going to put three-dimensional text on there, whatever you want to put on there, school appropriate, please. Um, and I'm um, going to show you how to do that. And then when you get them all done, uh, I am going to print them out and I'm going to figure out a way to get them to you. Okay, so I'm going to go through the steps that are required to do this. I'm going to go kind of medium fast. Uh, because what I really like about these videos is if you don't understand something I just said or did in the video, you can just pause the video and back it up a little bit and watch it again. It is important, though, that you follow the steps of the video exactly like I have demonstrated them, in the order that I have demonstrated them, because 3D modeling is order dependent. In other words, you've got to create that first layer first and correctly before you do something that's going to make it 3D. I'll point these things out as I go along. So I'm going to bring up Sketch. I'm going to switch to screen mode right now and I'm going to show you how to bring up SketchUp and from the very beginning, okay? So here we go. I'm going to screen mode. And this is SketchUp for Schools. This is the classroom. I'm going to back up one page. So when you go to the classroom, I want you to go to the 3D modeling folder. And what I want you to do is click on 3D template. What that is going to do, it's going to open up a template that is specifically designed for this project. I'm always going to give you a template as a starting point, okay? And then you see the link up here. Um, it just says template, just click on it. What you should see, oh, by the way, I hope the quality of this video is better. Um, I increased it to high def. The last one I did for you was not very good. Um, and uh, what you're gonna see is something that looks like this. And if you scroll up, to the top of the screen, you'll see a choice that says open for SketchUp, okay? And it should open up SketchUp without any fuss. In a second, get rid of, go okay. So this is what I'm gonna have you guys end up creating, okay? Um, and I'm gonna show you how to do it keystroke by keystroke. But in addition, I'm going to show you some kind of shortcut things to do. So you see, I just changed my screen a little bit and I am going to open up this thing called shortcut keys. I'm just going to put it to the side. All right. And I'll explain this. Oh, come on. Stop being fussy. I'm going to explain what these shortcut keys in just one second. OK, I'm going to move that to the side. All right, and you'll like these shortcut keys. Going to make my SketchUp screen as big as possible. So you're going to create a keychain that's going to kind of look something like this. Although you'll probably want to put something more interesting than engineering on it. That's what I chose to do, okay? But I kind of wanted to give you an idea about what the end product looks like. If you notice, this is a 3D model. Now I'm orbiting around the keychain so you can see that it is three dimensionals. Now let's start with Orbit. All right, it's a very useful tool. Orbit is when you are doing a three dimensional project, three dimensional model, you have to be able to see all different sides of it. So imagine that like you have a camera and you're orbiting the camera around the object that you're trying to see. So the symbol for that is what you see here. I'm moving my mouse around. My mouse is the orbit symbol. It's like these a red arrow and a green arrow chasing itself. Well, there are two ways to enable the orbit function. One way is to come down to, where is it? Here we go. 
down here on the toolbar and click on the orbit function. All right. These are other viewing functions we'll talk about a little bit later. And click on that, and you're in orbit mode. And when I hold down my mouse, I can just orbit all around this thing. But what's a lot more convenient, and over to the side now, I'm going to talk about these shortcut keys, okay? SketchUp, while you have this beautiful graphical interface here, okay, where you can click on whatever you want to do, you also have shortcut keys. So over here is a list of the most commonly used shortcut keys I put together. If you notice this list here, okay, orbit is one of the items on the list. So in other words, this orbit function is one of the shortcut keys. So what it means is that if I just press the letter O, the first letter in the word orbit, I will go into orbit function. If I want to erase, for example, I just press E. E is the first letter in the word erase. If I want to draw a line, I will just press the letter O, and I'll go into line drawing mode. I think you get the idea. So, rather than having to go over here to this toolbar and find the tool that you want, which sometimes is a sub menu of these things like here is rectangle to draw a circle is a sub menu of the rectangle it's a lot of times a lot easier just hit a shortcut key like r for rectangle c for circle m for move etc etc all right tape measure orbit zoom eraser line okay these aren't all of them, but these are the ones that you would use the most often. So I'm going to leave that up on the side. And as I draw um, this keychain, I am going to use the shortcut keys. And I'm going to say what key I just pressed, because I would rather you use the shortcut keys than come over here and hunt around for the function. It is a lot faster for you and makes you much more proficient and much more professional in the use of that tool, okay? So, quick review. This is kind of what your project's gonna look like when you're done. We are, the toolbar over here for the different SketchUp features is graphical. And when you click on one of these, there are other functions that pop out that are associated with that function, kind of below that function. But a fast way to get to those functions is using the shortcut keys. I'm going to use the shortcut keys because it just is a lot, lot easier. All right. Um, oh, this thing popped up. Just click the right arrow and get rid of it. All right. So first of all, I'm just going to delete this whole thing. Now, one of the most important uh, important tools you're going to use is the select tool that is this cursor here, but it also is spacebar. Select S spacebar S. So when I press the spacebar, I go back to just a normal old cursor and I can hold down my mouse, drag it over a bunch of stuff, and I select it. You see it turns blue. So that's what I'm going to do because I want to delete and start from scratch so you guys can see how I did that. All right. So here we go. First thing, remember, I told you when we're doing a three-dimensional object, we really have to draw a two-dimensional shape first and pull it up into a three-dimensional shape. And that is exactly what we're going to do here. So the base of that keychain that we're going to start with is really just a rectangle, okay? And I'll show you what I mean in a minute. Rectangle is key R, so rectangle R. I'm in rectangle mode. I'm going to start at the origin. We always want to start here. It makes life really easy. Click, one click on the origin, let go of my mouse. Slide my mouse a little bit now. How big of a rectangle do we want to make? Well, remember, this template that you opened up is a millimeter template. In other words, all of the measurements are defaulted to be millimeters. 
And if you look down in this bottom corner, you will see that SketchUp is keeping track of our dimensions of our rectangle as we move the rectangle around. Well, if we know how big we want it to be, rather than trying to move it to where we get just exactly the right size, we can just type in those dimensions. And that's what we're gonna do. So I'm just, I want my rectangle, this is the size I want your keychain to be. The, the base size is 90 millimeters by 30. So I'm gonna just type in 90,30. And when I do that, I should get a rectangle that looks like this. If you did not get a rectangle that looks like this, uh, well, I think you kind of did something wrong. Here's the cool thing. Never be afraid to try something in SketchUp because it supports an undo function, which is control Z, just like in Docs or Word or any of these other apps, you can do control Z and undo stuff. So let's say I type this in wrong. Let's say you got something that doesn't look like this. I just hit control Z. It undoes the last thing I did. I'm going to try it again. So R for rectangle, come to the origin. Oh, I don't want it to be centered. Let me hit R again. No, stop that. It does this sometimes and it's really annoying. Pardon me, control Z. I, I just want rectangle. There we go. You don't want it to be centered on the origin. You want the corner to be on the origin. Just escape out of that function and go back into it. So here I am rectangle. Click and let go, move it over this way. Type in 90, 30. There's my rectangle. Now, if you remember that keychain had rounded off edges. So really what that is, that is a arc that I wanna round off these edges. Well, there are a couple of ways I could do that. I could just click on this pencil symbol here, which is drawing. And the pencil draws a straight line. This squiggly symbol draws a curved line. So I could try to freehand it and draw a nice smooth edge around there. But you can see it doesn't come out very good. So there is a much better way to do this. SketchUp is a much better drawer than I am. So I don't like that. So what am I going to do? I'm going to undo. What's the key for that? Control Z. All right, now I want to draw an arc, okay? So where are the arcs? Well, I can press A here for arc. I can also go over here. But like I said, I'm going to try to use these shortcut keys as much as I can because it makes things a lot faster. So I'm going to do A for arc, all right? So to do an arc, I got to click on one side for the beginning of the arc the other side for the end of the arc, and then up here for the middle of the arc. And let's see what that looks like. I'm just gonna, and I'm just kind of eyeballing this. I'm estimating it. I'm gonna click on this side. I'm gonna come straight across. Now notice, I'm kind of not lined up with the other side and notice that little line in the middle is black. I would like it to be red the same color as the x-axis. So if I just move it a little bit, ah, it's red. That means it's perfectly lined up with that x-axis, which is what I want. That's my second point, click. I'm coming over here. I'm gonna move until it says midpoint, click. Now I now have a perfect arc. I'm gonna orbit a little bit, O for orbit just so I can be looking straight down on the keychain as I'm doing this. See what a perfect arc that is, okay? Now, if you're like, Ugh, I don't understand how we did that, pause the video, back it up, watch it again, okay? Now, we're gonna do an arc down at the other end as well. What's the shortcut key for arc? A. So you put that little arc symbol up on there, so I'm going to estimate it here. They call eyeballing it. I'm going to put a click on this edge. See, it says I'm on the edge. 
I'm going to come over to the other edge. I want that red line to pop up. That means I'm parallel with the x-axis. Makes it nice and neat. And then I'm going to come up to the midpoint of this end. Boom, I have another perfect arc. And um, SketchUp draws these things perfectly. Now I want to get rid of those corners. So how would I get rid of those corners? Well, this is where you need to understand the concept of erasing the parts of a shape that you don't want. Okay? So I've just drawn a bunch of two-dimensional shapes. I drew a rectangle and an arc. They are all two-dimensional. I'm building up to that three-dimensional shape but I gotta build this base first, okay? But there's part of this base that I don't want, so I want to erase it. I could click on the eraser, or I could press E for eraser. I'm gonna press E for the shortcut key. It turns into an eraser. So if I just click on the lines that I don't want, don't click over here on what you do want. Oops, I just created, I just deleted part of the arc. Oops, ah, no problem. I want to undo that. Control Z. Okay? Never be afraid to try stuff. Just Control Z back. And I'm going to erase these things. I don't want that either. And I don't want this stuff. Click, click. I'm just clicking away on the stuff I don't want. Uh, come on, there we go. All right. Now we're starting to look like that keychain. I'm going to orbit just a little bit O, key O. Like this view a little bit better. So we need to put a hole in here, right? A hole, because that's where it hooks up to the key ring, right? So what's the first part of a hole? You know, the, the two-dimensional geometric shape. Well, it's just a circle. Circle C. Or I could come over here and find out where the circle is. Oh, there it is, okay. Easiest way to do it is just press the key C. C, oops. Well, anytime you start to do something and it's in the wrong place, hit the escape key on your keyboard, the key that says E, S, C. That means escape, that means like stop. I didn't want to do that, okay. Not control Z, because control Z will undo stuff. Escape just means, oops, I clicked in the wrong spot, sorry. All right, so we're doing a circle. And so again, I want it to kind of be in the middle. And I'm just going to get it to where I want the center of the circle to be. And I'm just estimating this. And I'm going to do click. That has just set the center of my circle. Now, as I move the mouse slide, side to side, you see the circle getting bigger and smaller. Notice in the bottom right corner, it's telling me how big the radius of that circle is. Remember, the radius is the distance from the center of the circle to the edge. So right now, it's telling me the radius of that circle I have drawn is 6.9 millimeters. Remember, everything is in millimeters in this template. Well, that looks a little bit too big, but not like a little bit too big. So maybe five millimeters might be better. So all I'm gonna do is press five. And you see it popped into the radius box and enter. So now it just drew a circle of with a radius of five millimeters exactly, all right? But it's a circle. I want it to be a hole. So how do I get rid of the part in the center? Well, real simple. I just need to select it and I can just hit the delete key, all right? So I'm going to select it. I could come over here and click on this or the space bar. This is probably the one hot key, you're or not shortcut key, I should say, that you're gonna use the most is select, getting back to just that pointer, just the cursor. Spacebar. It's also super convenient. It's the spacebar right there. So let me just go back to select mode. I'm going to click the center of that circle. I don't want it, so I'm going to delete it. I could erase it, but 
delete key works just fine. So you have a delete key in your keyboard. Click the delete key. Look at that. All right. Now I have the base shape of my three dimensional keyboard. I'm now ready to go ahead and pull it up into multiple layers to make that one layer into multiple layers, which means it will become a three dimensional shape. So here we go. How do I pull it up? Well, one way, well, the way we want to use it is by using this push pull tool that's over here on the toolbar. Again, this is a function that you do a lot when you're 3D modeling because you're creating a two dimensional shape and pulling it up into a three dimensional shape. So they created a shortcut key for push pull. Remember, we're going to pull this shape up, we're going to pull it up into three dimensions. So I'm just going to press the key P for push pull. And I'm going to select the thing that I want to pull up into three dimensions. And that is this base shape of the key chain that we have created. So I hold down my mouse. And as I pull up, look, it turns white. That means it's three dimensions. So how thick do I want it to be? Well, I'm just going to tell you, you want it to be three millimeters thick. So I let go of my mouse and it left it at 2.79. Don't move your mouse at all. I want to make it exactly three. Because we're using the CAD program, everything can be very exact. So I'm just going to press three. Notice it pops into the distance box and enter. Now my two dimensional object has become a three dimensional object and it is exactly three millimeters thick. Pretty cool, right? And see, all of this is being done without you knowing how to draw very well. All right, and that is totally fine because SketchUp does know how to draw really well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put an edge on this thing, okay, a raised edge, and we're gonna put text on here. Now the text can be whatever you want. We'll get to that in just a minute. I'm going to orbit a little bit to get a better view. I want to look straight down on this. Orbit, O key. All right. Now zooming, I'm using the scroll button on my mouse, but there also is a zoom extents function over here. And that means it's going to zoom in to the maximum amount it's going to find the edges of your 3D model and zoom and give you a good zoom setting for it automatically. You don't have to do anything. So you see it's over here. I hope you can see that. There we go. Shift Z. That's another shortcut key. I'm going to hit Shift Z. I didn't do much because I was or because I was in the wrong window. <laughs> Shift Z. Notice how it zooms in and gives me like, puts the maximum amount of my 3D model in the screen without me having to figure it out. Shift Z, zoom extents. It's very, very handy. I'm going to do an offset now. An offset gives me that raised edge. This I think I need to explain a little bit more than I have other stuff. An offset, I'm just going to demonstrate. Offset, first letter of the word offset is O. So I'm going to press O. I've got to be in the right window. O, O. Why aren't you working? Oh, because I pressed I and there is no I. I don't know. It's not working. Oh, oh I need to come out of orbit. So I'm going to... I don't know why I did that. Here we go. Oh, make me look bad, why don't you? Hmm. 
Not sure why O isn't working. So for the offset, I had, no, that's follow me. For the offset, I had to come over here to the toolbar. I apologize for that. I don't know why it didn't. I'm going to try that again. Go back to select. Press O. Oh, maybe I have to pre press O twice. Let me try that. O, O. No. O is orbit. Why is offset must not be O? Maybe it's zero. I don't know. That's weird. That looks like a typo to me. Okay, so for offset, just come over to this um, toolbar. I'll figure that out later. And pick this weird-looking guy down here, offset. Okay. Now, I want to start on the edge, and I'm going to click on the edge. Wait till it says on edge. I'm going to click. And notice when I move towards the center a little bit, okay, it's creating like another edge or an offset edge. Now, how thick do I want that to be? Well, I really only want it to be like one millimeter, which is pretty thin, hard to draw, but easy for SketchUp. So I'm just going to press one and enter. And it just gave me an edge, a decorative edge, for my keychain of one millimeter. Let's orbit and kind of change our view a little bit. All right. Um, now I want to raise this edge up. I want to raise it up two millimeters. Now, how do I pull something up? Hint, hint, pull. First letter, push, pull. Remember I said this is something you're going to do a lot. So I'm going to want to push, pull that edge. So I'm going to press P. I'm going to try to get right on that edge. That edge is so small. Control T. There it is. And I'm going to pull it up. And you see the distance down below. And I just want, I'm going to go two millimeters. Let's go two millimeters. Let's zoom back up. Let's just do Shift Z. All right. So we started with a two dimensional rectangle. We put arcs on the ends to round them off. We put a circle because we needed a hole to attach our cubes. We put a decorative offset on it and raised it up two millimeters. And now we're just about done. And I hit orbit a lot. You'll see my cursor changes to O for orbit. Because I always like to look and see all the other sides of this. Okay. Now we want to put text on here. There is no shortcut key that I am aware of for 3D text. So you have to go over here to the shapes function. And you come down to here and hover over that big letter A, and that is 3D text, all right? Now, it pops up this menu. You can type in any text you want. But before you do that, there's something I need to tell you. Um, for some crazy reason, it defaults to this gigantic size Height of the letters, 304 millimeters. Holy cow. That's like three times bigger than the entire keychain. So remember, when we did our keychain, you might not remember, and that's okay, because I'm going to remind you now, the keychain is 90 millimeters long by 30 millimeters high. So if we tried to put a 300 millimeter letter on this thing, it would be like way, way, way bigger than the keychain. I don't know why it defaults to this and it's kind of annoying, but we just deal with it. So I'm going to delete 300. And a good height, that means from the bottom of the letter to the top of the letter. So from the bottom of an A, for example, to the top of an A, how big do we want it? Well, looking at this keychain, from the bottom here to the top is 30 millimeters. Okay? 
the length of it from here to here is 90. So if it's 30 from here to here, maybe the text a good size would be about 20. Leave a little space at the top and a little bit at the bottom. Extrusion, that's a real, <laughs> that word's not very obvious what it means. It means how thick are the letters? How high up will it stick up off of the surface? Well, since the edge that we raised here is two millimeters, we probably only want our letters to raise up two millimeters also. Okay. So before you enter in any text, please make sure the height of your text, in other words, from here to here is 20, and the thickness of the letters, how far they stick up the surface, is two millimeters. Now you can type in whatever you want. So you go up here to 3D text. There are some various fonts you can pick from, not a whole lot, to be honest with you. And you can type in 3D text. Well, so I am going to type in, I'm gonna type in something that's a little bit too long on purpose and I'll show you why. And then I'm gonna show you like what I think is the coolest two in SketchUp. So I'm gonna type in engineering. And when I click okay, all right, the word engineering is going to pop up on my screen on top of the keychain. Pretty good, but it's like too big, right? Way too big. But that is not a problem because I'm going to show, I like that font, by the way. I'm going to show you what I think one of the most useful tools and fun tools to use in SketchUp. And that is this thing they called scaling. Okay, so what scaling is, is you can take any object that you have drawn and kind of squish it and pull it and pull it and, and, and push it and change all of the dimensions of the shape without like changing the properties of the shape. In other words, without changing the font, without having to type it in all over again or redraw it. Let me demonstrate it. It'll make a lot more sense. So here's this text I just drew in, and I'm going to orbit around a little bit. You're like, wow, it's like way too long. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I'm like, whoa, that's too big. So I would love to squish this thing down so it actually fits on the keychain. What I really want to do is scale it down. Any of you that have ever done any work with like models, like airplane models, car models, anything like that, you might already understand the concept of scaling. So what scaling is, it means it looks like the real full, like you're building a model of an airplane. Well, obviously you can't build a full-size airplane in your, in your living room, right? But they make a model that they'll say is like 1 64th scale, which means it's 1 64th the size of the real airplane. All right. So it still looks pretty much the same. It's just shrunk down. The scaling function allows us to do the same thing. All right. So when I press S for scaling, Okay, it's over here under scale. It's gonna put these little green dots over whatever I have selected. And if I hover over one of these dots, one of these little green squares, it gives me a place where I can push and pull and reshape, rescale the object that I have selected. Now I'm going to want to zoom in a little bit. Because it got a little small and I'm going to do it again. I'm going to scale again. Now it also allows you to push it and pull it in different directions. Scaling is your friend and scaling can be a lot of fun. 
And so you're seeing me zooming in and out. That's with the scroll bar, doing the scaling. And I highly recommend when you're doing the scaling function, you see these various push-pull points of the scaling function. There are three of them. This is the top layer, bottom layer, and center of whatever object it is you're scaling. I always have the best luck by using the center one. The top and bottom ones get a little bit wonky on you sometimes, at least they do for me. Scrolling back out. And this other tool, by the way, I, I didn't tell you I was doing this. Down here at the bottom is the hand, and you'll see they call it this hand symbol. Well, it's, they call it pan is the function. But imagine it's just like you have a piece of paper on your table, you're drawing on it, and you want to slide the paper around with your hand. So I just press H for hand, allows me to slide it around, forward and back up. And Does it let me orbit? It just lets me slide it around. And now I can zoom back in and look, I have scrunched down that great big word engineering onto my keychain. So I know I've just thrown a ton of stuff at you. And you're like, wow, Mr. B, that was a lot. That's okay. I don't expect you to get this done like lickety split, wham, bam, okay? But because this is a tutorial video, you can stop, rewind, watch it again. If you make a mistake, like let's say you were scaling something on here and you made a mistake and did something like that and went, ah, that's not what I wanted. What do you do whenever you do something in SketchUp you didn't intend to do? Control Z, it'll put it right back. So that's why I pack a lot into these videos. I'm encouraging you to try stuff. If it doesn't work, control Z, back up the video, watch it again, and keep doing it until you get what you want. All right? This video is probably pretty long by now, like 30 minutes or so, but you don't have to do all of this at one time, okay? I want you to use this video as a tool. I will demonstrate this stuff in class, but I'm gonna go, oh yeah, the video is 37 minutes. Um, I'm gonna go through this stuff really fast in class because what the video allows students to do, it allows each student to work at their own pace. They can watch the video and back up and rewind it anytime they want, rather than I'm trying to demo this to the class. And one student is like, yes, Mr. B, can you back it up and do that again? And another student is ready to go on to the next step. Also, this allows you, of course, to watch the video and try this stuff at home. That's why I put so much time into these videos. Been doing this for years and it works out really, really well for the studio, uh, for the students. Uh, just a real quick thing before I stop the video, I want you to notice something. The word saved up here is grayed out because SketchUp for Schools does auto save. It auto saves as you go. Um, if it hasn't auto saved, when you're getting ready to quit, just make sure to click on this word we say save. Make sure to save your work. It does auto save, but sometimes you kind of want to force a save. So I'm going to stop this video here. I know this is a lot to take in, but um, also know you guys um, will know that you can stop the video, um, back it up, watch it again. Don't be afraid to try stuff. Um, where is my, here we go. Don't be afraid to try stuff. Try it. If it doesn't work, Control-Z, it's your friend. It undoes stuff. And actually, Control-Z will undo like two, three, four, five things. So if you get all the way into your keychain and go, gosh, I wish I could go back to where I started, just start pressing Control-Z and it'll go boom, 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 all the way back, okay? Um, matter of fact, I can't even, well, closed it. Never mind. <laughs> 
Uh, so yeah, so like right here, I'm gonna I'm gonna demonstrate that for you. I can control Z so far back, all the way back to the original keychain. So don't be afraid to do that. Don't be afraid to try it. All right. I can control Z all the way back. So I want you to watch the video. Okay. Uh, watch a little bit. When I do something, pause the video and you try it. If it doesn't work out, that's okay. Control Z, back up the video, watch it again. Okay. Um, but everything should look, you know, pretty much like it does uh, on my screen. All right. I'm going to stop the video now. Uh, 40 minutes, 40 minutes and 37 seconds. All right. So anyway, hey, good luck. You know, I'm here to answer your questions. See you soon.